Welcome to Victoria Park, home of Bursko Football Club for this afternoon's FA Trophy semi-final second leg between Bursko and Aylesbury United. 205 teams entered this competition in September, now only four remain. A place in the final at Villa Park beckons and there will be no nationwide conference clubs this year. Four teams, each with a chance. Today Bursko and Aylesbury United will fight it out here in what is Bursko's biggest game in their history, certainly in recent years. There's been massive local and national media attention around the place this week and that signifies the enormity of this game. A warm welcome to all Bursko fans. I'm Alan Boardman of In The Frame Videos bringing you today's game between Bursko and Aylesbury United. Mr. Shaw from Crewe. Hey, Sean Teal, player manager of Bursker. 20 years ago you were a player here. Yeah, long you had time a, ago. A glittering football league career. Mm. How did you come to return? Um, I'd been at Southport for the previous two years and uh, yeah, I think you know when your time is done at a club and, and the manager really didn't want me there. And, um, for whatever reasons, he had his own reasons and, and you have to you have to live with that. Um, so I left at the end of last season and within sort of a couple of days, Frank had been in touch with me. I've known Frank a long time and um, asked me if I fancied doing the job. They, they were looking for a player manager. Um, and I was more than happy, obviously. I, it's only 10 minutes from home as well and it's, you know, it, it means I can put everything into it. I'm not a million miles away and if, if I need to get down here quick, I can do it. Um, you know, and it's been good. It's, it's been most enjoyable. Well, you're coming up for your first year in the job as a player manager. How, how have you enjoyed the experience? Well, it's been terrific. Um, you know, with, with a great help from, from the players. Um, the players, to be fair to them, have given me everything all season. Um, you know, and it culminates in an in a, in a, a FA Trophy tie like this today, which is, you know, for the club is huge. It's the, the biggest game in the club's history. Um, but we have to just make sure we, we do the business today and then we can enjoy all the plaudits after. You've played 49 times this season, I, I make it. You still obviously have plenty to offer on the pitch. Yeah, I think, um, I think obviously at 39 you start looking at yourself and thinking, well, you know, am I still doing the right things? Um, you know, and, and that proves obviously we've had 22 clean sheets as well, which proves obviously I'm doing something right. And, and you know, if, it, if, the, if the legs aren't as good as they used to be, at least I can organise people and I can talk to people. And, and you know, I, I firmly believe I've been a big help to the younger lads at the back. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll keep playing as long as I can, as long as it suits me to play and, and I feel good. Then I'll play. And you've had ten matches in the FA Trophy. Are you surprised at your progress? Um, yeah, when you look at when you go back to the very first one, Marine, um, we were 30 seconds from going out. We score, we score at the place in the replay, going to extra time and play them off the park and win easily. We go to Harrogate in the next round and we're two down with quarter of an hour to go, um, and we, we get a draw, come back and, and play them off the park here. Um, and, you know, I mean, then you get drawn against your and you think, oh, well, that's the end of that one. You think, you know, I mean, I mean, if, if we're all honest, we, we probably thought we'd go down there, oh, hoping to put a good show on and maybe not take too much of a hiding. But to come away 2 0 winners was, was uh, momentous, really. Um, and it set us up for today. You know, we went down there and did, and did a lot of hard work last week. Saying that, we, we probably should have won last week. We had uh, the better chances in the game. Um, but the tie's all square and we're at home and it's. Up to us, yeah. Have we got a full squad for today, or have we? We've got still a players rested on. Yeah, Tuesday. yeah. Well, I've, I've done that over the last two weeks, obviously with a view to this game. Um, the only the only player we've got missing is, is young Mark Byrne, who, um, who did his ankle at Hucknall uh, a week on Tuesday ago, and uh, we thought he cracked a bone in his ankle. It, it now appears that he hasn't. He's only got um, a lot of swelling, so I mean he's going to be. Another two weeks, he's going to be vying for a place for the, for the final, hopefully, if we get this. And the mood in the camp, how would you describe that, Scott? Um, it's, it's a bit strange, because obviously there's a lot of nerves jangling and that. I mean, I think if you ask me that after the game, I'll tell you one way or the other. It'll either be a complete de depression or a, it'll, it'll be complete euphoria. Um, hopefully, it's the, it's the latter of the two. Thank you, Sean. All, right. All the best for today. Cheers. Gary Martindale, you're looking very calm. Are you looking forward to today's game? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, 
Semi-finals are always big occasions. Um, uh, we, it was a tough game down there last week, albeit I thought we had the best part of the game, the chances. Yeah, we'll be finishing off here today. So you've had a look at Aylesbury, you've played them. Um, what, you know, what's the fact, what are going to be the factors today, do you think, Paul? I think we can't afford to worry about them. I think we've got to uh, worry about ourselves. Um, talked to a couple of the lads early on. I think we start the game positively. Um, everyone uh, working hard. Uh, and like, obviously, you know, we can try and get an early goal, settle everyone down. Um, but I mean, the lads are quite hoping that we'll get a result. You're one of the most senior players in the squad, and you've played professional football, haven't you? Yeah, can you help the younger lads along? Well, I'd like to think we try to, because myself, obviously the manager, um, he's a little bit older than myself. Yeah, of course. Um, Carl McCauley, John Norman, uh, Paul Baines. Uh, and we do we try to help the young lads. I mean, well, some of the young lads have got uh, really good attitudes and uh, they've got like, plenty of ability between them, so hopefully with our experience and uh, ability um, we can pull together and get through. I notice a lot of the young lads in the squad have played a lot of games this season as well, so you seem to have a very settled look about you. Yeah, uh, if you look at the amount of games played, uh, most of the young lads have played in nearly every game. Um, I've, I've missed the three and a half months of the season myself so through injury, but um, all the lads are confident, you know what I mean? The young lads have got plenty of comments as well, they'll just be in the change teams and most of them are laughing their heads off, so... Um, but, you know, I mean, come three o'clock, that's when the testing time will be, and um, as I said before, I mean, um, I'm confident and I'm sure the lads are confident. There'll, be, there'll be a full house in here today, there. Yeah, place yeah. will be roaring. Will that help you along? Yeah, it should do. I mean, like, uh, they had a good card down there and we played them uh, last week, and, um, they made a little bit of noise, so uh, hopefully our uh, uh, lads can get behind us and what have you, and um, we'll just see what happens. John, here we are again, FA Trophy semi-final day. Yeah. Last year you were with Morecambe, mm -hmm. this year it's Burska. Yeah. What have you got to offer this football club today? Uh, definitely experience and enthusiasm. I don't look enthusiastic at times, but uh, it's, it's all hidden. Um, I don't know. I suppose, like, just just try and keep people on 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 the ball, really, and 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 lively and sharp and quick thinking, quick free kicks, throw-ins. Just get on the ball as early as you can and and make them unsettled, really. And it's Aylesbury, of course. What what do you what were your reflections on the game last week on the first leg, John? Uh, first 20 minutes, I thought like they were very very slow at starting, and we had like possibly we had two glorious chances and like possibly three or four half chances as well. Uh, we didn't take them and then the game seemed to get a little bit stretched. We sat off them a little bit. They had a couple of pop shots from about 30 yards or something like that. And then second half, I thought we started pretty poorly, to be honest. I think we thought this was going to be easy. And um, say, what, an hour into, into the game then, I think that they got a goal with, I mean, it was a good goal, don't get me wrong, but it seemed to have that little bit of luck that I thought wasn't going in. I was right behind mm. it. And uh, as it was, it just dropped in, and I thought, oh, this is going to be tough now. So, because uh, I mean, you could tell what that was, uh, you know, what it meant to them. Yeah. And um, you know, so I thought, well, they're going to really fight, fight for this. And then um, we got the equalise, and I, I was just happy to just see that through, really. What was the mood in the dressing room like after the game? What did Sean say to you? Uh, <laughs> I think if someone would have told us we were going to draw 1-1 before the game, I think everyone would have been happy, perfectly happy. But because of the chances that we missed, then I think we were a little bit despondent, really. And it, some of the lads were felt a little bit flat, and which is quite strange, really, when you, you go away from home and you get a result. So I suppose that just shows the fact that if we do play to our potential, that hopefully we'll get the result that we, we deserve. And uh, you're back at in the Unibond League after few years in the conference how do you find in the change in style uh, it is a lot a lot different it's more physical um, you don't get as you don't get the free kicks that you'd expect to get um, but saying that like I mean when we did play against uh, like talking about our side itself uh, we to play the oval and we matched them every way for ability um, it's just I suppose like sharp, as you say like sharpness and fitness and that desire to, to go that extra yard and obviously because they're doing it week in, week out. But they're, again, like, I mean, they're superior at that level, so 
I mean, we're not really that far off at conference level, and a lot of these younger lads could certainly go into Football League even. You've scored some spectacular goals over the years. Can we expect a John Norman special today? Um, I hope so, yeah. I mean, you, you can, you never say never, do you? So, um, I say, I mean, I've got a, a record of probably, what, one in three. I mean, I, I mean obviously, I'm playing midfield the last last uh, month or so. But uh, you never know, I might pop up in the box or something. And who are the other dangers for, for Bersker? Who's likely to score today? Uh, well, we've got goals in it. Like, I mean, Peter Wright with his pace, Gary Martindale his experience. John Lawless is clever on the ball, and also you got um, got myself, so I suppose. And there's a lot of lads that can uh, sneak in, back stick and stuff like that. So, I mean, I don't care who scores. The referee can score as far as I'm concerned. As long as it's a goal, I don't mind. I hope you smile at five o'clock, John. Thank oh, you very so much. do I. Cheers, Cheers. thanks. I know. Semi-final second leg here at Victoria Park. First goal entertaining Aylesbury United. The Linux against the Docks. And for the Linux with the Teal as their manager, they'll be looking to go one better than last week's draw at Aylesbury in the first leg and reach the final of this prestigious trophy for the first time in their history. The FA Trophy, of course, the most prestigious of cup competitions in non-league football. And neither of these two sides have been anywhere near the semi-finals in their history. A great day for Bursco Football Club. Resplendent in their green and white. And uh, it's pretty much a mixed with youth and experience in the side. I'm sure Till will be hoping that all the players can just help the young lads through this. Gary Martindale's goal last week at Aylesbury brought the sides level. Looking to his experience this afternoon to guide them to the final. Yeah, he's got him in shot now. Paul Dead. Paul Dead is The evergreen Craig Maskell, player coach. At Aylesbury, it was his goal that set the tie rolling on Saturday. And he'll be looking to lift his side this afternoon. Captains Colm Corley and Greg Williams exchange pleasantries with the referee for this afternoon's game, Mr. Ilderton. Certainly calm before the storm here at Burstow's Victoria Park. A bumper crowd inside the ground. Average crowd a couple of hundred here usually. The April sunshine beating down upon us. A mouth-watering prospect this afternoon. And games don't get bigger than this at this level of football. Elvin they've changed yellow strip, will kick us off from right to left. Bersko looking in a familiar 4-4-2, full strength side today. The same team that started last week at Buckingham Road. Two changes for Aylesbury. And away we go with Maskell in this Historic game here at Victory Park. Daniel Gordon back to Lee Wogan. The wind seems to be in Bursko's favour in this first half. They look to use that to their advantage. John Norman gets it forward quickly, looking for Peter Wright. Confident first touch for Lee Warden. The wind certainly 
appearing to be a factor in these early stages. As Colin McCauley wrestles the ball from Maskell on a first touch for Matthew Taylor, young keeper. Here for Bersko. So both sides will be looking to settle quickly into their rhythm. And that wind certainly has picked up here inside the ground, uh, Victoria Park. Lawless with the throw. He finds block. Decent ball in from John Lawless. Martindale struggling to knock that one back in. Again, the wind drifting the ball away. And Marian Okura safely sets things going for Aylesbury. Towering header from Joe Taylor. Craig Williams, the skipper, turning up on the left wing for Aylesbury, looking for Maskell. He's past John Block, along as far as skipper Carl McCauley, away for Bersko. A push in the back by Alex Stanley on uh, Peter Wright. Plenty of noise below us from the travelling Aylesbury supporters. And much comment was made about the friendly atmosphere which they generated last week at Buckingham Road in the first leg. So it's the Unibon League against the Ryman League Premier Division sides this afternoon. Very much the friendly side of football. Be struggling to clear their line early on as Ryan Bowen picks it up wide left. Little back heel failing to outsmart Sifura. Back in by Sean Teal and Ryan Bowen caught offside. Lee Wogan is on loan from Wimbledon at Aylesbury. Will set things well in the end. He gets some distance on the kick this time. Very tentative start by both sides. Just as it was, I believe, last week at Aylesbury. Real tight game, particularly the first 20 minutes. Sean Teal feels his side had done enough to win the game. Three or four good chances he said they had. And it's Teal indeed who clears. Alex Stanley looking for Craig Maskell. And he's Skipper driving hard on the left, and he'll win the first corner of the game, considered by Joe Taylor. So good start defending there from the best goal player manager. As Masco with the first corner of the game, only as far as McCauley. Bersko will gain their shape, here's young Peter Wright. Plenty of pace, but he concedes the throw. The referee seems to have overruled his uh, assistant. Bersko indeed will have the throw. To be taken by Jeff Underwood, the only doubt for today's game. He limped off last week. Yeah. 
so Ellsbury with a free kick, taking shape. Alex Stanley knocks it forward, looking for Chris Bandura. Away by Lawless, looking for right again, but Mosco really haven't got out. Ellsbury, yeah, it is. John Lawless, crowded out by yellow shirts. Again, putting the pressure back on. Leading by example, John Lawless, man of the match last week at Aylesbury. And another great young prospect here at Bursco. Block inside, looking for Bowen. Sean Till was present before the game well, it's uh, 20 odd clean sheets this season. Something we'll be looking to maintain this afternoon. So still nothing to choose between the sides. Very tight game as you would expect a semi-final to be. The other semi-finalists, of course, Tamworth and Havant will be playing today for the other place in the final at Villa Park. Tamworth hold a 1-0 lead going into the second leg. should know the result of that game before the end of today's. It did kick off at two o'clock, apparently so. But back to action with Victoria Park. Joel Taylor clears. Craig Maskell seen a lot of the ball in the first ten minutes for Aylesbury. No nonsense clears by Cole McCauley. Oh, an intelligent ball up the line by Manuel Mariani Fura. The wind's certainly a contributory factor here. The limits yet to find their strike. Both sides had wins in midweek with uh, resting several players. And then Sean Tour rested six of the side that started in uh, a tailsbury. A lovely turn by Peter Wright, spinning inside two defenders. Intelligent ball out wide right to Lawless. Lawless is past William, ball inside, looking back for Peter Wright. And the pressure maintained by Bursko. Real quality there from Peter Wright. Almost from doing this defence for the first time this afternoon. Bersko now looking to build up ahead of steam here. Pressurise this. Aylesbury fans, they did feel they could get at them if they put some pressure on them. John Norman was saying before the game. Tidy header, first from Taylor, then from Underwood. And the recipient, Matt Taylor. Route one forward, long ball. Here's John Norman, looking to show some finesse this afternoon. But it's number six, Dwayne Plummer on the charge for Aylesbury. Got his angles wrong. So a range finder there from Dwayne Plummer. Plenty of uh, ex football league experience in this every side. A heavy challenge from John Lawless. Indeed, a lawless challenge, and uh, one feels Mr. Elderton may produce a card. Now, I think he's just going to have a word with John Lawless. 
Referee resisting the temptation to show the first card of the afternoon. First goal, Howard Perth, just won the Unibond Fair Play Award for March, so won't be looking to pick up too many yellow cards. As Ryan Bowen changes defence into attack. He is again very ever busy on the left hand side, Ryan Bowen. It's just from Manuela receives a ticking off from the referee. Well, that looked like a handball, but Peter Wright looking to wriggle away, causing problems again in the Aylesbury box. Daniel Gordon. Certainly that was ball to hand. But Mr Alderson, the referee, had a good long hard look at that one and he wasn't far away. I think perhaps he made the right decision. Bosco must be satisfied with the throw here. Another busy Peter Wright again. McCauley will not run in, looking for Lawless. He gets forward a lot, doesn't he, John Lawless? Word and quickly away. Elsby now building on the left. John Norman skips inside. Loses out possession to Greg Williams and concedes a free kick. Neither side dominating the midfield yet. Approaching 15 minutes on the clock. As Blunt knocks it forward, looking for Martindale. One or two slack passes from both sides. Possession squandered readily. There's Plummer, wide left for Elsby United. Back inside. Looking for Baker. This is Baker. And Bangura makes a mess of that one. Good defending of game from Bosco. Tristan Manuela looks to turn defence into attack again. Two nerves down there from both sides. Peter Rapp battling for possession with three of the players. John Block <laughs> got involved as well. And the youngster John Block in his first season here at Bursco will receive the first yellow card of the afternoon for that uh, feisty challenge, should we say. And Peter Wright did need some help in that. Uh, good spirit and determination showed by the young Bosco midfielders. A yellow card for block, three kick to Ellsbury. Bangura and Manuela lurking menacingly on the edge of the box. Bangura target, John Norman with a lovely swivel and turn. Out to Ryan Bowen, charging forward. Ryan Bowen for a first goal. And he's held over by Daniel Gordon. Again, so far, littered with free kicks. Mostly minor offences, but really stopping the flow to the game. Sean Tilly who scored on Tuesday evening against Aston United with a quickly taken free kick into John Norman, super header and Martindale at the back post with the best opening so far it was on a plate for Gary Martindale quick thinking by John Norman classy header back across goal but they'll speed 
Settle for the corner. And again, looking for Bowen. And it's the head of Marion Ifura carrying the ball away. Well, missed chances last week at Aylesbury. Let's hope Burst go right now to rule that one. But certainly the bubbly pitch not helping the, the sides. Build again with John Block. Peter Wright looks to set it back in for John Norman. Intelligent pass out wide right to Lawless. Good approach play this by Bursco and a tester for Lee Morgan. Dealt with capably. And Peter, Wright, Peter Wright drilled by the centre halves. Aylesbury, he'll certainly want the ball to feet, I would imagine. As again, Bosco asking the questions, going forward with Lawless. Plumber not looking comfortable, is Martindale. Into Peter Wright, good ball across the face of Dale again. And Ryan Bowen was inches away. Well, two warnings now from Bosco. Super approach, approach play on the right by Peter Wright. Just saying he wanted the ball down to feet so he could cause his uh, problems. As we approach the midway point in the first half of this FA Trophy final second leg, no score here at Bursco, but two fine opportunities to break the deadlock for Martindale and Bowen. Absolutely towering header from Sean Toole. Gary Martindale looking for the free kick. He felt that Plummer took his legs. As Ellsbury look to forward forward themselves. Not a good clearance by Matthew Taylor. Here's Dwayne Plummer. Wide right to Masco. Carl McCauley puts an end to that little foray forward. Right, pressurising Lee Warden and winning himself a corner. Good pressure from the young number nine. He's been a real acquisition for Bresco this season, Peter Wright. And Bresco have another corner. John Norman swings it across. Joe Taylor's up from the back. But uh, Aylesbury can break forward now with Maskell. Looking to find Baker wide left. Good clearance again. Very solid defence. Jeff Underwood and uh, John Block with Teal and Taylor and McCauley in there. Over 200 games between them this season. Lots of experience on young shoulders in this first goal side. Teal finds Martindale. Tristan Manuela again lobbed it forward hopefully he is again the big Aylesbury midfield player on his players Underwood lovely turn of pace by Lawless and again it's like Stanley this time unceremoniously dumping Lawless to the ground and the second yellow card of the afternoon Cynical challenge by Stanley. Sean Teal forward looking for Bowen back post. Too easy for Lee Wogan. Safe hands so far from the keeper. Another 
towering header from Sean Teal. Bowen and Martindale working the left flank. To little avail this time. Bowen goes in again to try and mix it with Plummer. It's the yellow shirts coming out with the ball. Plenty of them forward. Tristan Manuela forward, looking for Maskell. Maskell looking for the free kick. Up and over from Joe Taylor into Peter Wright. He's certainly got the measure of Daniel Gordon. Looking for support now, it's arrived from John Norman. Jeff Underwood looking for Lawless. Bosco using the full width of the pitch, keeping possession. Patient build up. Martindale now is away from Gordon. And John Blitz finds some quality. And as far as McGrath. Elby not looking too comfortable at the back. Shouting for that one. I think he's won every header so far. Really leading by example there, but only gave for Peter Wright to wrestle down. Good quick feet from Wright into John Norman. Now Ryan Bowen, some space on the left for him. Ball behind the Elgin defenders. Dwayne Plummer out with the responsibility for Elgin. Baker provides the man wide left. Greg Williams again, the fullback, the skipper, are well forward. Quarter given, another free kick. Bersko looking the more accomplished of the two sides so far. But still nothing to choose between them in goals. And Sean Teal again drives it forward into Martindale. Intelligent flick for Peter Wright. Taylor confidently plucks the ball out of the air. Wide forward again for Bursko. Another, another free kick given. I wouldn't like to count them in this first half. But again, I'm sure defending by Aylesbury. Gordon heading the ball across his own back line there. Joe Taylor, towering header. Peter Wright, beaten to it by Bangura. Sean Teal and uh, Joe Taylor happy to soak up this aerial bombardment from Aylesbury. We're looking for a hero in the semi-final. Sean Teal again will win the header. And he is conceding several inches to Kristen Manuela. Underwood 
forward. Again, Bersko building on the right. Another throw. Real picturesque setting there on this ground in West Lancashire. Cloud fields all around us. What a very serious business this afternoon of the FA Trophy semi-final. So free kick to Aylesbury. Alex Stanley looking for the big men forward, Bangura and Ifuva. Eased away by John Lawless. To a bright start to the game, John Lawless. But quiet now for Bersko, that's a dangerous ball to the back post. Well taken by Taylor. Palmed away, John Norman now, wide left. Dwayne Plummer returns the ball forward. Another giveaway in defence. Sloppy passing from both sides. Enables Williams to drive forward for Aylesbury. Joe Taylor must win this one, and he does. Now Aylesbury looking the more likely side. They're asking the questions now. Good disciplined approach play from them. Dwayne Plummer inside. John Brock for company. Coming away from Johnny Norman. Baker helps it out. Wide right. Manuela forward. Good block by Martindale. Solid defending from Bursko. <laughs> well, mistakes from both sides in the midfield. None of them yet catastrophic. Sean Teal forward again. Asking a lot of Peter Wright. Tidily back by Bowen to player manager Sean Teal again. That appeared to be one in the back for Martindale. Bursko with another free kick, 40 yards out. As the sun shines around Victoria Park on this lovely April afternoon. Can Bursko find the first goal now with John Lawless inside. Right arriving, he took a knock from Plummer. Peter Wright went flying in there. Where's the assassin? Well, I've got a break in the play today's attendance. One is I have. Another blow for Peter Wright <laughs> to the nose. A man of uh, diminutive stature, not very quick feet, and going in where it hurts there. Just informed that the attendance for today's game, 1,770. Sort of the biggest crowd in recent times here at Bursko. Going members back to a 4,000 crowd against crew in the FA Cup in the late 1950s. I'm sure Frank Parr will remember that day. Well, it's head tennis at the moment. 
Boska looking to get the ball down with Ryan Bowen. Again, they're looking for a wide right, John Lawless. He's certainly given the uh, Linux some width on that side. Not perhaps as instrumental as he was last week. Five minutes gone here at Victoria Park. Still no score. But those two chances which first created to Martindale and Bowen. The closest we've come. Gordon superbly marshalling the defence there. And again, it's not tidy at the back from uh, Ellersbury. Lawless is in behind them now until the towering figure of Steve McGrath comes across to tidy up. Borsko again busy around the ball. Looking to prize open this sturdy defence of Aylesbury. Vying for possession with Bangura. As Marion Ashura comes forward from the back for Aylesbury to Dwayne Plummer. It's the mild man of John Norman who's uh, in trouble with the referee now. Martin Dale inches away from breaking down that move. Masco looking for the ball in the right left channel. Again, good defending from Bosco. And given nothing away at the back so far, which is a good sign for Sean Teal's men. Quickly forward again by Tia looking for Peter Wright. And Jurgen with some work to do now. Kept his eye on the ball, firm clearance. Justin Manuela forward again. Manuela putting pressure on Underwood. Still, I would say very little to choose between the sides. Neither of them has really got the game by the scruff of the neck with any spell of possession. Still very tentative. We'll have to see who wants this the most. Sean Teal with the free kick. Joe Taylor's up from the back, far post, the big man. Aim towards Ryan Bowen, but it's Steve McGraw. Quality header out from him, and now Joe Baker with some uh, space in front of him to run into. Only as far as block. And then Baker hacks away at Carl McCauley. In the 
the sunshine. John Norman for Bursko. Another throw in on this right hand side for Lawless. Peter Wright again twists inside. And it took three of them to stop him. And illegally it was. Johnny Norman floats it across again. He may have been tempted to shoot. No problem at all for Wargan. Baker again looking menacing on the right, feeding Craig Maskell. As a bird first call for Plummer. Offside. Just for a moment there, Dwayne Plummer thought he was away on the right hand side. Solid, stout defending from Bosco. Approaching half time, still no sign of a goal. Here in West Lancashire. They went in level up near all at uh, Buckingham Road last week. And then two goals in nine minutes, one from either side, set up this tie today. Bosco still looking for the defining moment. Who will be the hero this afternoon? Because one of these sides will be contesting the FA Trophy final at Villa Park. Graham Bowen. Surging forward again, looking for Peter White, wide left. Again, running, pulling the strings in midfield for Aylesbury. Slow approach play, good build up from them. The final ball in from Baker. Too much to ask of uh, Craig Maskell. Some notable scouts for Bersko in this season's FA Trophy. Most notably, of course, Yeovil, but uh, also great results against Wakefield and Emery. 5 0 here at Victoria Park, and a fine away win at uh, Oakston. As John Norman carries the ball away, wide left, cuts inside, Gordon. Looking for Martindale again. And lots of room for Fiston Manuela. He didn't seem to want to take up the challenge himself. Aylesbury building slowly again. Plenty of yellow shirts in support. And the flag will bring an end to that move. Bandura caught offside again. The skipper Carl McCauley asking for the midfield to get busy. Well, the wind's dropped, but the sun 
very firmly in Matthew Taylor's eyes in this first half. He's been very much a spectator, though, Matthew Taylor. Not been pressurised at all. And have we yet had a meaningful shot on target? Another one for Lee Warden to pluck out of the air with his hands like flypaper. Not a glove put on by him this afternoon. Another exemplary header from Tool. Is this game ebbs towards the half time point? Both sides will be happy to go in level. But as we, if anything, edging the final minutes, McGraw forward, only as far as Teal, who never took his eye off that at all. Johnny Norman up and over the top. Too much for Peter Wright. Joe Taylor again answering the questions asked of him with these big men forward for Aylesbury United. Manuel, a lovely turn and flip from Maskell. Teal again reads the situation and brings to an end another Aylesbury United move. Again for Aylesbury, wide right. They are finishing strongly now in this first half. Yeah, they've still not dented the burst go defence yet, let alone made any holes in it. Plenty of yellow shirts forward again. Burst goal again, defending in numbers. <laughs> well, much for Sean Teal to digest and savour at half time to see if he can outwit. Steve uh, Cordery, the manager of Aylesbury. I suppose Steve Cordery will be the happier of the two managers. He's uh, weathered the storm of the two glorious chances that Bursko produced and finishing stronger. More ideas needed from Bursko as we approach half time at 0 0 here in the FA Trophy semi final. A moment of magic perhaps from. Right or Martindale. And it's not been the prettiest of halves, and we're still square. Halfway there. Chances for Martindale, and then minutes later for Ryan Bowen. The best we've seen from Bursko. Nothing between the sides apart from that. Perhaps Aylesbury have showed it in possession, but at half time here at Victoria Park, it's very firmly Bursko nil, Aylesbury United nil.
uh, referee Mr. Alderton brings it on for the second half. Both managers resisting the temptation to make changes. No score. But uh, I'm sure words of wisdom from both managers. Steve Cordery and Sean Teal. 45 minutes away now from the FA Trophy final. Extra time and penalties, of course, today, if the scores remain level. Really big game this for Aylesbury. They are 22nd in the Ryman League Premier Division. And only eight wins all season, so it may be a distraction for them, this FA Trophy run. Bersko hoping to put that to an end for them this afternoon. Mr. Wilson tells me that's the last play commence as Ryan Bowen drives forward for the Linux and wins the first corner of the second half. As Bersko looks to lift it now, Ryan Bowen is longest serving player at this club, over 200 appearances before the start of the season, could have put on it's in front. Lawless swings the corner and using the win, looking for Bowen, and Peter Wright got in front of Daniel Gordon then, and very nearly drew first blood. Lee Morgan injured in his uh, attempt to clear. <laughs> so John Lawless again with the corner, swings it across. Morgan's lost it. And again, Wright got the header. But Teal up from the back. A little bit of pushing and shoving in there. And Ailes will survive. Trouble for the Giants. Uh, Ifura and McGraw there, they did two centre backs. First guy won both headers from the corners. Clearance by Underwood, right leaning on Plummer. Quickly taken free kick for Ellsbury with Baker again, menacing on the right. Oh, Chris Bandura made a mess of that one. And lost the boot to boot. Taken header from Williams, the skipper releases Maskell on the left. Jeff Underwood going nowhere, good ball in. Montfield with the height of Aylesbury, it's going to be the set pieces or crosses that will cause the trouble for Bursko. Again, Chris Bangura makes a hash of the cross. Crying out for a goal. Neither side yet able to produce one. Again, it's head tennis between uh, McGrath and Teal. As the Aylesbury band below us finds its uh, rhythm, they're hoping their side can do the same on the pitch. Neither side has found any of them so far this afternoon. Cole McCauley under pressure, sees the ball out for a goal kick.
seem to be winning the midfield exchanges now. Still, the distribution is not the best. Burst goal has another throw. Which, uh, Cole McCauley will lob forward. Full kick conceded by Marion Nakura. John Norman weighs up the options, perhaps looking to the back post where Sean Teal will arrive. Indeed, Teal does find a header, menacingly in there for Martindale. A little too much power on it, perhaps. Possession again squandered, this time by Lee Worgan. Can Bursko indeed find some rhythm? First goal in this game will be all important, of course. Nothing between the sides. Peter Wright sent sprawling again. And John Lawless defending from the front. forward by Bangora this time, finds Craig Maskell. Plenty of yellow shirts, poor forward again. Maskell with the layoff, clumsily, into John Block, one for Wright to chase after. Daniel Gordon has done a good job on Peter Wright this afternoon, not giving him much to sniff at. Out comes Steve McGrath for Aylesbury, charging down the middle. Into Maskell, this is dangerous. Another poor ball by Maskell, however. Now gives Bursko the edge. Bit more of a cut tie feel about this game now. Peter Wright chases and dispossesses Greg Williams. Still in the corner there with the ball, Peter Wright. Now he's looking for John Norman. Gordon with the header. Lawless with the shot. And it fell kindly for John Lawless on the left foot. But missed the top. A lean by Sean Teal into Craig Maskell. Quickly taken full kick to Baker. He's looking for Bangura. Manuela in, good ball. Joe Taylor out with a header. First going to need to be tidy here. Baker maintains the pressure. Money with four and four with. Attack breaks down. Ailes were asking more questions though in this uh, first period of the second half. Winning more ball in midfield. Maskell wriggling away from John Block. Norman, out come Bursko. Block finds Martindale. The two 11s crash, McGraw wins the tussle. Tumbling, Joe Taylor wins the throw. Good solid defending again by one of the Taylor, two Taylor brothers in the side. Well, solid 
times another free kick to Bursko. And the offender on this occasion, Williams, the skipper, will receive the third yellow card of the afternoon. Now, who would have thought back in November when Bursko entertained Marine here in the first round of the FA Trophy? A goalless draw in front of a couple of hundred people would have led to today's semi-final second leg. Real momentous achievement for the club so far. I'm looking to go, of course, even further. They've got to be hungry, they've got to want this game. They've certainly got the equipment to win it. As Martindale wrestles it away and feeds Underwood right back. Jeff Underwood, intelligent ball to Lawless. New ball by Underwood. Got the big man in the yellow shirts. Gobble that one up again. And release Baker for Aylesbury. Baker gives it away. Now Carl McCauley driving forward for Bursko. Looking inside for Peter Wright. Miguel with bags of experience. Wins it back for Elsby. Now Ryan Bowen. Block gives it away. Taylor, first to the ball, clinically. Now Peter Wright, wide right for Bursko. Still no score at Victoria Park. for Lawless. And it's Stanley got away with that one and lost the ball there. Regained composure and conceded a corner. Plenty of green shirts in the box. Corner from Lawless, towering header from Teal. Again, it just wouldn't drop for the Greens. and still no goals as Aylesbury have a man down on the halfway line. Mr Alderton will uh, perhaps stop proceedings to allow the trainer on. Greg Williams, the uh, elderly skipper, seems to be in some discomfort. Bursko have possession in the corner with John Lawless. Twists and turns away. Craig Mask will put the arm out. Innocuously, but effectively. First goal player now, bar Matthew Taylor, is in the Aylesbury half. Lawless 
with the front kick. Joe Taylor couldn't control the header, swirling in the wind. Another move comes to an end. As I agree with 10 men on the pitch. Williams limping back on. To make up the full complement. Another free kick to Bershko. How many times did I say that this afternoon? Well, Sean Teal was expecting a physical presence from Aylesbury. And so far they have really out caught Bershko, although fair means or foul, they don't seem to mind which. Still nil-nil. Bersko with a throw, deep into Elvin territory. Approaching the midway point in the second half now, still no sign of a goal. Nimble feet there from Alex Stanley, into Maskell. Defending again for Sean Teal and his troops. Super challenge from Ryan Bowen. As the locals take it. So the skipper Greg Williams will take no further part. Adam Campion, who started last week. The ex reading player will replace the skipper. Sweet crossfield ball. Bringing Maskell and Baker back into the play on the right side. Here's Baker. Back inside, Plummer now. This could be dangerous. Ben Norman scoops to clear with the header. Vitally won it was too. Mangura was lurking menacingly at the back post. Well, Gary Martindale's had a quiet game. He's had the best chance of it as well. And the top scorer for Bersko. Yet to show us his uh, goal scoring abilities. Ryan Bowen again, an fairly influential second half. Tirelessly working right on side, John Lawless runs into Campion. Campion's barely been on the pitch a minute and he's committed a foul. Quickly taken free kick to Ryan Bowen. Daniel Gordon quickly in. Daniel Gordon and uh, Dwayne Plummer have looked very effective this afternoon for Aylesbury. Swung the cross again by Underwood. Another throw for Bersko, looking to turn the screw, putting pressure on the Salesbury defence. They failed to unlock them so far. Again, another bobble on the pitch. Just Takes the ball away from Peter Wright. John Norman. Neatly brought down. Distribution again, not good. Block. In this goal, Stanley. 
Wayne Plummer. A great game on the field. For Bangura. More urgency about Elsby now. Van Weller takes his eye off the ball. Kicking away for both sides. I think if uh, Sean Till did have a game plan, it were, probably would have been two or, three, two or three goals up by this stage. But the stakes are high. It's the FA Trophy semi final. Neither side wanting to make the mistake. Space appearing now for Maskell to work his art. Baker again, coming more and more into the game. Go Baker. Maskell ever busy as usual. And Campion. Straight pass. See that one out. to get excited about for this bumper crowd here at Victoria Park. All the supporters below are still making lots of noise to encourage their side. John Norman took a hammering there for champion. Full brunt of the challenge. Now champion He's not been on the pitch very long. And I think it's a stern word from uh, referee Elderton. Matthew Taylor again sets the ball in motion for Bersko. Norman helps it forward. Another offside. A real lull in the game now as if we're heading for a crescendo of a finish perhaps. Still 20 minutes to go as Ryan Bowen loses that one in the sun. And had rather more time than uh, he envisaged. Again, swirling around Victory Park now. The sun in the eyes as well for the players. Last 
Arsenal, that's Arsenal trainee. They replace Van Gora. And Maguire loses out to Martindale. Pretty taken throw for Bresca. Looking for Pete White. possession working the flanks wide left this time it's a substitute for Zibi putting Lawless under pressure good backtracking there from Lawless right hand side of midfield and a very effective tidying up kick out by Lee Wogan Underwood, the arms are out. Free kick to burst, but quickly taken by Teal. Now, which side will find the finish? Will it be the Docks or will it be the Linnets? Peter Wright. Looking for the free kick. Kick again for Aylesbury. Muskell and Baker weighing up the options. Good men are up. Taylor with a punch. And this time, the uh, linesman signalling a free kick for uh, the push by Gordon on right. The referee missed that one, the assistant didn't. So Sean Teal again, raise the options, drives it forward, holds behind them, Bowen's offside. Persisting with the driven ball and the free kicks. And this, a real tight semi final. Apparently, uh, chances are plenty last week at uh, Aylesbury. Most of them fell to Bursco. As Joe Taylor again looks for. The ever willing Peter Wright, but as ever Peter Wright has got Daniel Gordon limpeted to him. That's been a real contest of note this afternoon. Can Peter Wright for once get free of his shackles? Bowen, this will fall for block. 
will be overhead. McGraw away. Now right. Chumps to Bresco. Martindale's in there. But Steve McGraw, a power of strength. Watch that one under the bar. As Bresco now again turn up the pressure on the Salesbury defence. Just over under 15 minutes to go. And still the game crying out for a goal. Lawless with the corner into the wind. McGray again with the header. Martindale on the turn, but the flag's up. Another push in there. Again, it was uh, Sean Teal causing the problem. Joe Taylor heads it back, Gordon again. Clears, looking for the Fura. John Block getting it forward quickly to Peter Wright. Assisted now by Lawless. Wright peels away to the right again. Out muscled by Alex Stanley. Again, favouring McGrath. Bags of experience from Sean Teal. Unhurried, unruffled by that dipping ball. This is Bowen. Couldn't keep it in. Forward, looking for Ed. Piston Manuela. Baker makes the extra man wide left. Campion back post, but a push again brings them the uh, the move to a grinding halt. Last ten minutes. And then extra time beckons. May we yet find a winner between these two very evenly matched sides this afternoon. The game delicately balanced. Well, Peter Wright taking on the two biggest players in the uh, Aylesbury side. <laughs> for the little nudge from Teal, which I'm sure we received. 12, Chris McHale, replacing number 11, Gary Martindale. Well, Chris McHale coming on for Martindale. And McHale leaves two goals. Puts out uh, Olfreton in the fourth round. Two more against Wakefield in the fifth. So, uh, that's the choice of Sean Teal. And it's a bit of height for Bursko to match 
and Flora and McGrath up front. Well, one, two or three headers already. Dumped by Ryan Bowen. Free kick again. Right hand side for Aylesbury. And as this game heads to a conclusion, one goal now would be absolutely priceless. Swung across again, looking for Eby. Neither attacking side seems to have, have the rub of the green with the uh, ball falling kindly in the box. John Norman checks and plays safety. Right wins the header. There's Gordon. But again, it didn't fall sweetly for McHale. Two offensively and safely. Back to Matthew Taylor. John Block again. Eagle legs get forward well. Warden comes. And a determined clearance. Neither goalkeeper made any sort of error today. But uh, neither goalkeeper has been unduly pressurised, it must be added. A purple patch for Aylesbury, thank you, possession. Bosco defending manfully, looking to get to. Uh, Bowen away on the left. Dwayne Plummer. Steadying the game for Aylesbury. Tools assistant Ray Stafford urging the team on from the sidelines. Again, it's head tennis, and again, it's the big men of Aylesbury who come out with possession. Baker skips away, nobody in the middle. And the danger again, thwarted quickly. Five minutes remain here at Victoria Park. Bursko nil, Aylesbury United nil. FA Trophy semi-final second leg. Ever closer. And nothing to choose between the sides. May we yet see a moment to change the game and win this contest. an even game between the sides as semi-finals often are. Well, the notebook's coming out again for uh, Wayne Plummer this time. Another player in the Aylesbury side with bags of experience, played for 
both Bristol City and Rovers in, the, in his time. And he's marshalled things this afternoon from midfield, but uh, he receives the yellow. Assisted free kick. Bristol electing for the long ball again. John Norman down swiftly to McHale. Colin McCauley will take the throw. Only McHale busy around the ball, providing the movement for McCauley. for Bowen, but he didn't know it was there. Good turn by Daniel Gordon. Can Osby yet pull forward on this counter-attack? As Unibond again tries to outsmart Ryman Lee. Pete Wright in the corner. Looking to drive one across. And then turns into trouble. Good ball in, though. He got the crossing eventually. Lee Wargan up to it again. Another one for Wright to chase, this time with Stanley. minutes is uh, coming to a conclusion as the game heads to extra time and then who knows can Bursko find one last throw of the dice here to kill this game and put their names into the final for the first time. Lawless with the corner, Bowen's up, and again it's McGraw with the header. And Adam Campion turns a throw into a corner. Again for Bursko. John Norman comes across. Sean Teal's arrived in the box. Joe Taylor's up there, Big McHale's in there. Teal arrives. Now it's Peter Wright pushing the back seemingly. Oh my goodness, it's a penalty! A pushing the right of Peter Wright by the man who's not left him alone all afternoon, Daniel Gordon. And this is the opportunity for Bursko right at the death. Well, High drama at Victory Park. Sean Teal dragging Peter Wright out of the way. Gordon did seem to nudge uh, Peter Wright. And it's Sean Teal firmly with the ball in his hands. Probably the calmest man on the pitch. Can Bursko put themselves into the FA Trophy semi-final? It's Dwayne Plummer who perhaps has said too much. As the referee sorts out this calm before 
the storm. Sean Teal still firmly holding the ball. Anticipation on the faces of those people. The good people of Bursco now a kick away. You can feel the tension around the ground. As Sean Teal. He now digs deep into his bags of experience. It's Teal v Wargan. Can he do it? He just looks so cool, Sean Teal. And that's the goal that will put Bersko into the final. Cool as you like. Sean Teal packs a momentous season. For Bersko Football Club, we're into stoppage time. Straight as a die, down the middle. And the game that's flattered to deceive has now brought us a goal right at the death. From Sean Teal. Well, Ellsbury now with 10 men, of course. We'll be looking to... Uh, hit back as quickly as possible but they'll be leaving holes at the back and Bursko have suddenly found some more legs well what a journey it's been for Sean Teal and Bursko they've only been in the Union Mon Premier League a couple of seasons Credit, of course, to John Davidson and his fine side of 2000. But now a breadth away from reaching Villa Park. Well catalogued, of course. Well documented this week, the home of Aston Villa. The team that Sean Teal served manfully for five years as a player. Another free kick to Bursko, pressure off. And what a finale. Amazing scenes. As the good people of Bursko can now look forward to another fantastic chapter in their history. And who knows? I feel sorry for this keeper, he's done nothing wrong all afternoon. And for the game to turn in the dying minutes on a penalty decision, well, Elvery may yet have something to answer with their own here. Campion drives it in, but Teal and his defence have looked solid all afternoon. has now arrived in the box for Aylesbury. John Norman finds the header. Arms aloft. And the man who missed out last year, John Norman, will be playing in the final of the FA. Scenes of jubilation here at Victoria Park. Bersko have done it. It wasn't the prettiest of games. But uh, the finale justified the, the ends. Bursko. Bursko have uh, played their part. Great support from the locals here. 
but you've got to feel sorry for Lee Morgan. know my my uh, thing about taking penalties of 21 before today never missed um, so it was a it's a funny old game isn't it it's written for you sometimes and where was that game going it was Patriot nowhere nowhere I mean it was a uh, as the semi-final goes it was a poor semi-final there's a, a lot of nervous players I think and you know uh, saying that we had two glorious chances first half if you took them away then it's you know the game's over at half time it's the same as down there we did the same thing but uh, to be fair I mean you know uh, as a team, they, I don't think they had a shot. I don't think Matty made a save, he made a couple of punches, and that was that. So, you know, I don't, uh, we were never going to lose it from that sense. It was just if it went all the way to penalties, and you, it's a lottery, isn't it? So, thankfully, 
I noticed when when the referee gave the penalty, you grabbed the ball. Oh, the, the lads knew anyway. Uh, the lads, there was only one taker anyway. Yeah. The lads were like, "You take it, go," and, and I was always going to take it. So, yeah, and uh, I've got I've got my own little ritual for penalties. So, you know, as you probably noticed, I didn't go near this penalty spot till the keeper was still in his line, because uh, you know I'm not I'm old enough to realise that if I put the ball down, the keeper's probably going to move it and try and upset me. And so that's why I wandered off and let them get their arguments out of the way, and then. You looked very calm, I must say. Don't yeah, you? I was. I was fine. I knew I was going to score. It was not a problem. Um, I have a, I have a thing. I put I put the ball on the spot. I never ever look at the keeper. Uh, I never turn to face the penalty till the referee blows the whistle. And I've already made my mind up. And you know, if the keeper guesses right, then so be it. Yeah. He's never guessed right yet. Great scenes at the end. Oh, the fabulous! Fabulous! Score. Absolutely fabulous. I mean, for you know, it's great for the players, and, and you know, the, the players deserve every every credit they get for it. But you know, for the, for the likes of Frank Parr, I mean, 56 years in the job, you know, and it's, it, it, he's come all this way, and he probably never thought he'd see a day like this at Burska Football Club, you know, and, and all the other helpers, not just not just Frank, you know, Stan Strickland, Stan Perth, Stewart, um, you know, the groundsmen, you know, they put so much work in over the years, and and really, it's for them, you know, at the end of the day, it's for them. Yeah, it's great for me. I'm going back to Villa Park. I, I can dream about that for the next month now, um, but it's for them. I mean, you put the town on the map, sure, certainly. Yeah, that's right. You know, we're we're not that. Who's that little little club, Burska? Where are they from? And you know, people know what we're about now and who we are. And you know, we'll go to Villa Park with uh, with our tails up, um, and we're going to try and win the damn thing now. If we don't, we don't. You know, it's it's not the end of the world. We've we've, we've our aim was to get there in the first place, and we've done that. Um, and we'll give it everything we can for 90 minutes at Villa Park. But we'll we'll make sure we thoroughly really enjoy the whole weekend. It has been a fantastic achievement, Sean. Unbelievable, yeah. Yeah, I mean, when, when I took the job at the start of the season, if somebody, I, I think I said in the paper the other day, if somebody had said to me, you know, oh, you'll get to the, uh, the FA Trophy final, people would have fallen about laughing, you know. Uh, and then we go to Yeovil and people are like, you know, you get all the, the well wishes, you know, but in the back of their minds, they, they're, they can't be thinking we're actually going to go there and win. There's only really us that believe we could do it. Um, you know, and we did it, and, and that got us into today's game and, and last week's game, and. You know, it was it was the one who held the nerve, and we did on the day. Sure, thank you. Great, brilliant. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your work. great day for Bursco Football Club. Fabulous day for me after 57 years connected with the Bursco Football Club. It's a day, you know, you always wish it's going to happen, and now it's happened. I'm very, very pleased for everybody connected with the football club, from the supporters right through to the directors. And I can only thank the players for what tremendous achievement they've, been, they've got this today. You know, it's a wonderful. Result for Bursco, maybe not a great game, but you know, goals win matches, and we got that goal in the last minute. And Peter, it was uh, your uh, you went down for the penalty. Tell us what happened. Mate. Well, I was just to be honest, I was backing into him, wait, waiting to get a shot off myself, and he had, he had a few niggles at me, and then when he had his last last one, I went down and ref gave a penalty. What was it like from the stands there, Frank, this afternoon? Oh, it was a bit hard, like you know, but still, you know, it's uh, whatever happens. It's on the 90 minutes, as I say, we scored in the last minute of the game, and you know, I feel a bit sorry for uh, Ellsbury United. You know, as we've been saying, it's very hard to go out in the semi-final. Nobody remembers the losers in the semi-final. You know, good luck to them. I hope they do well in the and then turn the position in the Premiership of the Ryman League. You know, and we've got to go on now secure three more points to keep in the uh, Unipom Premier Division but I'm sure we can do that over the next five games we've got. Peter, your first year here at Bursk, how have you enjoyed yourself? Well it's been brilliant, I mean um, I played at Halifax last year as you know but um, not really getting regular football and just come down here and play regular football I've not, I've not had my best season ever but the team, the way we played, we played well when we needed to, which is in the cup games really. Like like Frank says, we, our, our league position should be secure if we get one more win, but to get this far, nobody ever imagined it, I don't think. Frank, there's a great spirit around this place. I know we've won today, but even before the game, you can feel a friendly. Oh, there's been a big, you know, the, the crowd here today is fabulous, you know. I just don't know where the people's come from. They brought about 250 people, 250 spectators with them. But where the people's come out of the woodwork today, it's just been amazing. I've seen people here that I used to knock about with 50 odd years ago, you know, that's come to watch Bursco. And the thrill to bits, particularly for Frank Parr, you know, <laughs> because, you know, I've been involved here, as I say, 50 odd years, and they're quite pleased. And I'm, as I say, I'm pleased for everybody connected with the club, from the supporters right through to the players and the directors. And I think it's, you know, a success that we deserve, really. You know, what happens at Villa Park, you know, 
we can always say we got to the final, whether we win or we lose. But I'm sure the lads will give a good performance up against Tamworth, who went into extra time today. Did the crowd help you today, Peter? Well, I think they always do. The Muller crowd, they, they drive you on a little bit. Like, like um, Frank said, there was a lot here today who like who don't don't usually make it, but it was like eight times the crowd where we usually have. So, I mean, it was a brilliant day. Brilliant. We played in a, a couple of big crowds before this one, but to be in front of your own fans, it's it's brilliant and to win especially. So a great day for Bertico, Frank. Great day for Bertico. Looking you. forward to Villa Park. Cheers. Cheers. Yes.